Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say with hearts of praise, Hallelujah. Well, friends, I trust this finds you feeling blessed in Jesus this morning and honored to be amongst the people of God, the kingdom of God. Today is February the 20th in the year of our Lord, 2018, and this is one a day for the soul. Now we're continuing our journey through the story of the Bible, and you may think that we're going to speed through this portion pretty quickly, and we're going to appear to do so but the reason for that is, is what's left to us in the remainder of the writings of Moses, which would include Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, we being in the middle of the book of Exodus right now, Moses having just received the Ten Commandments, we know that while he is on the mount for 40 days and 40 nights, receiving the whole of the law of God, that the people down below grow impatient from his time on the mount. They create a golden idol, a golden calf, and they pay homage and worship to it as it being the one who has delivered them from evil. Now, God obviously doesn't take pleasure in this. The people are punished. 3,000 are killed that day. It's interesting because there's implications to the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts when in Exodus, 3,000 are killed and have no part in the kingdom. In the book of Acts, on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 are saved and make entry into the kingdom. Well, at this point in the story, specifically the remainder of the book of Exodus, Moses is going to outline and elaborate on the laws that God has given to him, and then you're going to find the instructions for the building of the tabernacle and all the implements that were in the tabernacle. As you leave the book of Exodus and enter into the book of Leviticus, again, it's going to be outlining in great detail the laws that God had given to his people. When you come into Numbers, you're going to see that the people are a million plus, possibly even two million at this point in history. They have been divided into the tribes of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel, and so there needs to be a census taken so that the bloodlines can be followed. Once you move from the book of Numbers into the book of Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy is a summary version of everything that was discussed in Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers. And interesting, the book of Deuteronomy is the book that Jesus quoted from the most. So we could say that it was his favorite book. And if you have never read the book of Deuteronomy, I cannot encourage you strong enough to do so. It is a fabulous read. It speaks deeply to the soul, to the mind of us as the people of God. And it confirms what his Holy Spirit teaches us on a day-by-day -day basis. Now, it is at the end of the book of Deuteronomy that we see the death of Moses. So if you have your Bible, turn to Deuteronomy chapter 34, and let's begin in verse 1. Now, Moses went up from the plains of Moab. He's an old man by this time. I mean, he was 80 years old when he went into Pharaoh and said, let my people go. So he is well into his hundreds. Well, it says, Moses went up from the plains of Moab unto the mountain of Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, that is over against Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead and Dan and all Naphtali and the land of Ephraim and Manasseh and all the land of Judah unto the utmost sea. This would be the promised land. This is where the people are headed. This is the land of the promise that God has made unto them. And the Lord said unto Moses in verse 4, This is the land which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, saying, I will give it unto thy seed. I have caused thee to see it with thine eyes, but thou shalt not go over thither. 
And Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. Now let's pause here for a moment because God has forbid Moses to enter into the promised land. And the reason he did this is found in Numbers chapter 20. Now in verse 1 we read, The children of Israel, the whole congregation, all million plus of them, went into the desert of Zin in the first month. And it was in this place that Miriam, Moses' sister, died and was buried. Now there was no water for the congregation. And so they began to complain to Moses why he would lead them into the wilderness with no water. It would appear that they've only been led there to die. And Moses and Aaron, in verse 6, went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and they fell upon their faces. They're seeking the Lord that he would move on behalf of the people and that their need for water would be met. And it says the glory of the Lord appeared unto them, unto Moses and Aaron. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take your rod, and gather thou the assembly together, and Aaron thy brother, and speak unto the rock before their eyes. Now notice, the rod has been an instrument of the implementation of divine miracles of God's working on the people's behalf throughout the life of Moses, specifically his time as leader of the people of Israel. But here God says, I want you to speak to the rock. And when you do, it will give forth water. And not just a little fountain of water, but enough water to sustain over a million people. And so in verse 9, Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. And he said to the people in verse 10, Hear now, ye rebels, you who rebel against God, you who murmur and complain and bicker. And Moses, in verse 11, lifted up his hand, and with his rod, he smote the rock twice. What did God say? Speak to the rock. But Moses put his trust in the rod rather than in God. And so for this, Moses is cursed. And that's what it says in verse 12. It says, the Lord spoke unto Moses and said, because you did not believe me, to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore, you, Moses, will not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them, into the promised land. Now, Moses has a general who serves under him by the name of Joshua, and it will be Joshua that will bring the people into the promised land. And so back to Deuteronomy chapter 34, we see in verse 7, that Moses was 120 years old when he died. And the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. For this is the time of mourning unto the people of Israel. Now Joshua, in verse 9, the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hands upon him, and the children of Israel hearkened unto him. They looked to him as a great leader. They saw him as the one who would take up the mantle, so to speak, of Moses and carry forth his leadership unto the people. And so the children of Israel hearkened unto Joshua, and they did all that the Lord commanded Moses. Now verse 10 says, There has not arose a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses, because the Lord knew him face to face. Now, before we leave the story of Moses, it's important that we point out two things. In Matthew chapter 17, in Mark chapter 9, and in Luke chapter 9, we have the story told of the transfiguration of Jesus. Jesus goes up upon the mount, and he is transfigured before Peter, James, and John. And as he was there in verse 29 of chapter 9 of Luke... It says, as Jesus prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistening, brighter than the sun, we are told in another place. And notice in verse 30, there talked with him two men, Moses and Elijah. 
Now, this is important, and the reason I want to point this out is because in Revelation chapter 11, we're told about the two witnesses that are going to appear in Jerusalem during the seven-year tribulation, and there's much speculation as to who these two witnesses will be. But it says in verse 5, if any man on earth will try to hurt these two witnesses, fire will proceed out of their mouth and they will devour their enemies. If any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. But now notice verse 6. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. Now, if you're familiar with the story of Elijah, you'll know that it was Elijah who stopped the heavens from raining. We're even told about that in the book of James. But then notice it says they will also have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with plagues as often as they will. Well, it was Moses who turned the water into blood, who smite the earth with plagues. So it's my belief that these two witnesses are going to be Moses and Elijah because of the powers that they have at this time given unto them by the Almighty and because they appeared on the Mount of Transfiguration with the Lord Jesus, and this could be the very event that they discussed at that time. Well, that being said, in leaving the life of Moses, now we begin in the book of Joshua. And Joshua begins in chapter 1, verse 1, by saying, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun. This was Moses' minister. He was Moses' servant. That's what minister means. And each of us being ministers of the Lord, we are servants to all that those we come across. Well, the Lord says in verse 2, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all the people, unto the land which I will give unto them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun. This will all be your land. It will all be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses Joshua, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee. I will not forsake thee. I want you to be strong, Joshua. Because there are many battles ahead that Joshua will lead them into. And I want you to be of good courage. For unto this people you will divide for an inheritance all the land that you will tread upon. The land which I swear unto your fathers to give them, unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But this is what I want to focus on, and this is where we're going to close today. He says, only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left. Remember, Jesus said it is a narrow path. It's so narrow that if you take one step to the left, you're off the path. One step to the right, you're off the path. And that's what Yahweh, the Most High, is instructing Joshua here. Do not turn from it from the right hand or to the left. And do this so that you will prosper whithersoever you go. Why? Because you're going to keep God first in all things at all times. You will know that it is I that will fight on your behalf. And all you must do is trust in, deeply trust in me. Now this book of the law, which I have given unto Moses, let it not depart out of your mouth. Meditate on it at all times, day and night, and discipline yourself to observe to do according to all that is written therein. For it is then you will make your way prosperous, and it is then you will have good success." 
Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. For it is the Lord, I, your God, I am with you, whithersoever you go. And friends, this is so true for us today. When we do not daily spend time in the word of God, it's easy for our mind to be filled with the things of this world. It's easy for us to become anxious. It's easy for us to become fearful because our minds are being filled with the things of this world. But when we fill our mind with the word of God, we become bold in the Lord. We become strong in the Lord. We are reminded to keep all of our trust, all of our faith, all of our hope in him. And with this being at the forefront of our mind, we will be strong and courageous. But if we allow the things of God, the word of God, the truth of God to move to the back of our minds and the circumstances of this world to sit at the front, we become weak, frightened, scared, and we feel anxious and hopeless and even alone in our circumstances. And so God is reminding us once again with this word that he has given to Joshua and even unto us who are reading this text that was recorded some 3,500 years ago, that if we will meditate constantly, day and night, every moment throughout our day, we will rest peacefully in the Lord our God, knowing that he is in control of all things and that he fights on our behalf. And as he promised Joshua, we will have no need to be afraid in verse 9 or dismayed, for it is the Lord our God who is with us wherever we go. Jesus said he would never leave us nor forsake us. And just as he has promised to be faithful, to abide in us, so friends, should we be faithful at all times to abide in him through the reading, the studying, the meditation of his holy word. Well, we're going to close there today, and I'm so thankful again. I'm grateful to the Lord Jesus that you are here with us, and I trust that you're growing in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus and of his holy word. And it is my prayer that it is having its work in your life and that you are being formed and shaped into the image of Jesus moment by moment. And in your life, there is less of you and more of him. Well, I love you, friends, and I admire and appreciate your desire for the word of God. And I pray for each of you daily. Now, as our Lord wills and until next time, May your day be blessed today. May you walk in the spirit of God and may you bring him glory in all you think, all you say, and all you do. Now, until the next video, I love you, friends. I'll see you then.